Hello and welcome Flow Lab people. Um, so I've been using Flow Lab for a little while and um, I was just starting to play around a little bit with the uh, ability to have multiple people uh, working on a game at the same time, which Flow Lab does support, but it is a little bit of uh, a, a bear <laughs> to set up. It's Well, it's not intuitive anyway um, to, to kind of get that going. And so I wanted to make this quick little video to show uh, how to get that set up so that you can start uh, working collaboratively on a Flow Lab game uh, if that's what you're wanting to do. And so um, the, I didn't see any other like real tutorials online. I saw one little like post in the uh, Flow Lab um, in the Flow Lab thing. So if you come over here, I found this one from 2018. I th apparently this is pretty much right when this feature came out. They call them dev teams. It talks about like what you can do and it does give a verbal description of how to do it, but it it was not like super easy for me to figure this out. And so just in case it becomes a challenge for anyone else, um, I figured I would just walk through how to do it. And that way uh, this would be here for anybody who needs it. So uh, step one, um, you basically have to, if you want to make a collaborative game, you have to, somebody has to kind of be the first one to like make the game, um, so to build the, the game. So whoever that person is, I guess I don't know who you want to call that person on your on your team, like your lead person or whatever. Um, the, somebody needs to make the game, so I'm going to just start with doing that. So here we go. Um, I, I'm in my profile. I'm going to make a game. I click the new game button here, right? This happens. Um, then you can come in here and here. I'm just going to make the world's fastest, silliest game. So uh, we'll start with I don't know a ground tile. Um, I'll call it ground. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll cop, we'll clone that. I'll have it just go in a big circle around the whole, the whole thing. How about that? It's beautiful. Okay. Ooh, it's a lovely pink too. All right. And then we'll go here, create. All right. Now I'm going to create a player. I'm going to do this like super slapdash. Uh, boom, boom. Uh, characters. Yeah, you're you look good, um, and then I'll let this person have the run and jump bundle, and they're gonna need to be able to move. That's good stuff. All right, I think that should be good. Okay, so there we go. We got like a super trivial game, <laughs> I guess. Um, and here I'll even name it name it something cool. Uh, what should I name this? The cool game. It's not cool at all. All right, click OK. Great. Hitting play. OK, and when we play it, yeah, he can move and get stuck on the wall. I really wish that collision thing wasn't, I wish the default collision was better, but what are you going to do, all right? OK, so it works. Great. Now, if you are um, doing this like I just did, right? So this is just the normal behavior is that if once you make your game, it's, it's effectively published, right? So you can, um, if you want, you can go back to my games. And go down here to cool game right and you can click on this little copy share URL boom copied it and then if you wanted to share it right you could open up so this is a different profile I have for flow lab this is a test a test student right um, and uh, you can go in here and you can just crack it open and that person can just start playing your game right so bam it's already there they can see your game they can see where you're at now Here's the deal though, right? This person, even though they can click this edit game button, you may have just heard that little noise go off over here on the bottom right. Uh, in fact, here, I'll, I'll zoom in a little here. The bottom right, you can see it says the saving is locked, right? And that's because uh, they are not allowed to actually edit your game. So they, I mean, they can edit it. Like, let's say I wanted to just delete. Look, like every time I do it, it gives a little beep, right? I can do that, right? I can edit it. Right, even in this, this as another person, I can come in here and do this just to kind of play, we down the hole, right? But then if I ever like want to reload this, right? None of those changes that I just made are going to be reflected, right? Because I don't, I, my test person here, my test student account, uh, does not have the, they're not a real editor of that game, right? So and that that makes sense, right? You wouldn't want to publish your game and then just any old schmo on the internet could change it. So that, that totally is the default behavior that makes a lot of sense. So if you want to change that, 
Uh, so a couple things you got to do. Uh, so we're going to go back over to the my profile, the one I made the game in first. Okay, so when you make this profile, the first thing you want to do, whoever made the game, is you're going to want to go create what's called a, I think it's called a dev team. All right, and the way you do that is you scroll on up to the top, you come over here to your profile name, and you go to profile. Right, you click on that. Okay, and that's going to open up this new page. Right, it actually has a list of kind of just a tabbed list of every single game that you've made. Right, um, and then you have this thing at the top that says create dev team. So this is the part that is a, will kind of first step you have to do to get get make it so you can have a game that can be uh, um, edited by multiple people. So you're going to create a, a team that is uh, that you're going to like add people into. Like so you're going to add like it's effectively like a little group. All right, so I'm going to create the group and I'm going to call it something. I called the game Cool Game, so let's call it Cool Cool Dev Team. All right, there we go. Great. So I create Cool Dev Dev Team. Great. So it shows up. Here's me, and I'm the owner of the dev team. All right. Now the other thing you need to do now is for anybody you want to be able to edit uh, or be a part of this team, and ultimately these are the people who are going to have the ability to edit games that you make theoretically. Um, you would uh, send them an invite to be a part of your dev team. So you can just add their email or their uh, username in here. So I have test student one here. So I'm just going to send this over to my test student person. So I'm going to invite that user, right? And then, okay, see, so here we go. Now we got a pending invitation. Great. So then if I switch back over to this person, right, I'm going to get out of here. And if on their side, if they just go back to my games, see, look what happened, boom. So now they should see when they go to my games, the person you invited should see this little thing that says, hey, would you like to join the development team? And it says the name. Um, and hopefully you've talked to them beforehand and they, this isn't just a surprise to them. Um, and if they know they know who, who invited them, they'll be like, sure, of course I wanna join your team. All right, so now they're, they're invited, so great. So now they're a part of the cool dev team that I created in the other profile, right? And what this actually also does is it lets them, they can they can see all the people who are on the team and they can actually just click on the names and look, and now this person can see all the games that I have in my other, pro, my main profile I've made, right? So you're being a part of the team, that dev team kind of just automatically gives you a window into what the other person has made, which I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess, but it's not, it isn't the, the entirety of why you would probably do this. But there you go. So now, um, now you're a part of the dev team, but that doesn't, that's not the whole story, right? So this is where it gets a little weird. So now that you have this dev team, um, let's say I was going to go back to this cool game I made, right? Okay. So here's cool game again. Um, and then here I'll, I'll copy that URL again. And let's go back over to, um, the test student, right? So now they're in the dev team, right? So when I load this up, okay, it's still the same game. If I click edit game, but look, it still says, it still says that it's saving is locked. So just being a part of the team does not like automatically give you the power to edit games made by that that other person, right? So I, I still can't, I mean, I can still do the stuff I was doing before, right? But as soon as I, you know, as soon as I refresh this, that's, that won't be reflected. You can see that it's not gonna it, the the changes are not being saved. Okay, so so th that step one is just get you in that dev team, but recognize just doing that will not will not actually <laughs> get you where you want all the way. Okay, so um, the second thing you have to do is I'm gonna go back over to my main profile. All right, so here's my here's my main profile. I'm gonna go back into my games. All right, so now that you've built this dev team. Right, and you have a, that dev team built on your on the profile that has the game. Now you come down here to your game, and you're gonna click on edit. Again, this is in the profile that can edit the game. Um, all right, and now here you are. Now you're gonna to want to go over here to settings, right? And when you're in settings, you're gonna click on advanced, and this is where you're gonna have this thing that says team editing, right? So then you're gonna click on this, and look what shows up in the list now: cool dev team, right? So you can click on that, right, and then click OK, right, and then I guess you can just get out of here and go back to play. Now, now, 
what I have done is for this specific game called Cool Game, I have made it so that everybody who is a part of the Cool Dev team, anybody who I have in that group, now has the power to edit this game um, at any point in time. And they can do pretty much anything they want to it, right? So let's just go ahead and prove that. Um, so I haven't done anything here. All I did was change that. All right, so let's refresh this. Um, and, you know, just to be on the safe side, I guess, so we play. Now I'm going to go back over to that, the test student, right? The person who, who was not the original person who created the game, but got added to the dev team, right? And now I'm going to go, uh, let's see here, go to profile so they can see. Yeah, I want to see Cervantes, boom. Okay, so here's my... Here's the, here's cool game. This is the one I just added was added to the dev team for, All right? So let's get in there. All right, and now I'm gonna click edit game, and looky there, none of that that little thing that was flashing before saying like eh, editing is locked is no longer there, which means that I can now edit this for real. So I'm gonna I'm gonna you know add a a pit here I guess, <laughs> All right? Hit play, All right? And oh no, All right? Okay, so I did that, but now when I refresh. Um, changes have been saved, okay? So now if I even go, now that I've done that change, all right, now I'm gonna go back to my original profile, my the, the main profile, right? I'm gonna hit refresh and, hey, look, those changes are there now, okay? So this is how you can work collaboratively with a group of people um, on a single Flow Lab game. Um, and that way everyone has the ability to add and modify the, the game. Um, now obviously this comes with some problems um, and you're definitely gonna wanna coordinate with your team as you're doing it. As you saw when I, when I made that original change, um, it, when I made that change in the other profile and then I came back over here to this profile, those, those blocks were still there. I had to refresh the, the game to make it so that they, I could see the changes. And so that is a little bit of a danger is that if people are working on the game simultaneously, it is possible for you to uh, do conflicting work. And um, I believe the way it was outlined in this this blog post, or blog post, this uh, uh, post here was that if you, um, it, I think the way it was said is, uh, if, yeah, if two people edit the same sprite or behavior at the same time, the last person to save will get a pop-up informing them of the conflict. Okay, so I guess there is, there's some sort of a thing that will happen um, when you're editing that will kind of let you know, hey, somebody else is working on this, there's a conflict, and you'll have the option to discard or, or whatever, and then you probably are gonna wanna coordinate with the people on your team, right? And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, you could, I don't know, you could probably just have a, like a Slack, Slack is a good one, or Discord, or I don't know, something that will let you um, collaborate in real time. Um, I'm a big fan of Slack, and just in case, I guess since I'm already here anyway, let's go the full nine yards. If you're interested, uh, Slack is a uh, team uh, collaboration chat tool, basically. It's just a little chatting tool. Um, I've used it in my professional work before, and it, it's nice, um, and it's free, so that might be nice. But in some, for some way or another, you're going to need to be talking to the people on your team. Um, I haven't had a chance to investigate whether or not there's a way to um, version control uh, the the stuff that you're doing in Flow Lab. Um, my instinct is there probably isn't, uh, but uh, so all that means is that you're going to have to be really cognizant of the changes you're making um, at any point in time. Uh, probably since I, I doubt there's like any legitimate way to version control this. Um, my instinct would probably be to be making copies of your game at, at certain kind of milestone points. And that way, if you continue to make further modifications, if you, you know, something goes wrong, you could always just go back to one of those other points in, in development and you're not like, oh no, we've lost everything, right? Like that, that's the scary part. Um, and so what I would, I would probably do, and just to sort of, I guess, sort of demo that is, if it were me, I'd probably do something like this. Um, once I got to a milestone point with cool game, I would then just clone the game. That's what this does, right? And then you can make, you can say like, okay, and, and maybe I'd rename this to like 
cool game v1 or something <laughs> and then like where everything was working great at that point and then i go to like cool game v2 or something so i click this button are you sure you want to clone this game sure am clone it right and then i think it just makes another one yeah right and then um and then i would edit this and i'd probably just say i'd probably just come over here and call it oh boy um yeah instead of copy of i'd probably like cool game you know v2 or something like this so i mean this is just me kind of making it up in, on the fly right but the point being is that like if you're going to be working collaboratively on something and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and um, this this would be a good or this is a, a way you could kind of protect yourself from losing work or having somebody accidentally do something they, they shouldn't and kind of mess things up for you. So anyways, that's how you would do it. Um, that's how you can set up uh, the collaboration uh, system in Flow Lab. Uh, hopefully this is a beneficial and uh, uh, I'll post more stuff when I find out how to do it. All right, thanks.